All right, guys, today we're gonna to do another mosaic Damascus project. This is something I haven't done before. We're gonna try plug welding mosaics. Um, I'm probably gonna screw it up, but uh, hopefully we get something cool at the end of it. Welcome to the shop. Let's get going. So here's a quick rundown on the pattern. I promise I won't take too long. We're gonna start with our stack of steel. First third, solid 1084, which will be black and then the remaining two thirds alternating 15 and 20 and 1084 for a layering pattern. We're gonna forge weld that together. We're gonna turn it on its diagonal, re-square it, and then draw it out into a long thin bar. And so that's illustrated right there. We're gonna have a diagonal with a pattern, the striped layers on the top and on the bottom diagonal, you'll have solid black. Once that's in a long bar form, we're gonna chop it up and restack it six, seven, eight times somewhere in there and we're gonna actually turn the pattern and alternate them on the end grain. And so we're gonna end up with these cool kind of uh, triangular dark patches and areas with uh, the stripes in them. We're gonna take that, we're gonna forge weld that entire stack together, turn it long ways, and then squash it and pull it out from the end grain. So we're gonna push that end grain pattern down into a bar. Um, so our, our long di our long triangle teeth sections are going to actually be running down the length of the bar. We're then going to come in and we're going to grind some swoops in here, as you can see, um, kind of deep into the bar and then forge it back flat. What that's going to do is that's actually going to create a zigzag snaking wave pattern here, as you can see. Uh, the whole point of this is I'm looking for getting a nice flowing mosaic with plenty of nice fine lines, uh, but also having some dark strips in here. And that's how we'll achieve, we'll achieve that by these dark areas. Um, and then right, once we've got this down to a kind of a nice thickness billet, uh, about a quarter inch or so, maybe a little, maybe a little thicker, we're gonna drift holes into the pattern. So I'm gonna start a little tiny pilot hole and then we're gonna punch a drift through and that's gonna spread those layers right there all the way around it. And then we're gonna do a, what's called a plug weld. We're gonna take a plug of mosaic Damascus that we've made previously, and we're gonna plug it in there and we're gonna weld it in place. And so that way, the final billet will have these cool plugs of different mosaics in the flowing grain pattern. So that's a quick overview of where we're going with this. I've never done plug welding, so fingers crossed that works. Also the weld where this stack is drawn out against all the grains is a really stressful weld on them on the metal so hopefully we don't split or crack anything but if we screw it up we're going to show you let's get going guys so we are starting with a square bar here and to take our layers into the 45 direction we square the bar up and then we forge it on a 45 to push those layers out into the corners then we draw it out as you can see the layers are on the bottom of the billet and not on the top because the top corner is going to be all black with that solid 1084 
now we're grinding our edges in order to test etch them so that we can lay them up in the proper orientation. If you remember from the drawing, we're looking for those black diamonds on one side and layered diamonds on the other. Go ahead and get these cleaned back up. Clean them off. Get any, make sure you get any acid residue or rust off them. Alright guys, so we're going to do something a little different with this stack. So we're going to weld it this way to put all of those layers together into one solid bar. But then we're going to turn it up on edge and we're actually going to push the pattern down and draw the bar out and flat this way against all those welds, which is going to be tricksy. But I need to put the handle in a certain orientation. Normally we just put it there because we're drawing this direction, but instead we're drawing this way. So I'm going to put a handle on the side of the billet. So a little bit of a different layup with that. All right, let's go. So we are putting a handle on this billet, but you'll see later on we actually take that handle off pretty quickly because I need to forge it from that side with the handles on in order to control the pattern as it's drawing out. So we're going to set this weld from the side of the press, going back and forth, making sure we get a good binding weld because here in a sec we're going to flip it up on end and smash it down. Start that drawing out the face pattern. With the handle off, this became quite a bear to handle. I really need to make some proper, proper tongs for stock this size with no handle. So we're just gonna square this up, make sure it's good and square before we really start aggressively drawing out the material from the top side. Now with a good and hot, as you can see, those layers are going up and down. And so we're drawing against the welds we just made. Always a bit of a risky move. Keep it hot, move slow, and don't let it get too cold during this step. Then of course, once we got it to the size we wanted it, and we're just gonna draw it lengthways out, we went ahead and put another handle on it. From this point on, it's just pattern control. Making sure that the bullet doesn't get too wide. Drawing it out nice and long, throw it in the rolling mill to get it down to that final size we want. And here we're shooting for a heavy quarter inch. Um, hindsight should have gotten thicker, uh, but you'll see why later on. So here we start to draw out our swoops that we're going to cut into the side. This is going to give the Damascus pattern the maiden hair look where it's going to look like flowing hair side to side. And that's achieved by grinding these swoops in and then forging that entire bar back flat. So we get it all mapped out for the depth and width that we want. And you see we've got two bars now. The, billet, the initial billet got really long so we've got two bars but we're really only going to focus on one from this step forward. Back into the forge and under the hydraulic press, gently push back the billet into square. Being very careful not to create cold shuts, it's really easy to do when a billet's this thin and has that much action going on. But as you can see, it's very, very gracefully putting in a beautiful sway into the pattern there. Doing a quick
quick test etch to make sure we like the pattern and to make sure we lay out the plugs in exactly where we want them. So there's a quick dip, shows the patterns. We're gonna set one bar aside and one bar we're gonna go ahead and lay out where we want our holes drifted. Then with a small drill bit, we're gonna put a tiny pilot hole at each mark. This gives us a great starting spot for our plug. Now we're gonna draw out some end cuts from mosaics that we've done in the past. And under the hammer, we're gonna very carefully round these mosaics over and turn them into the plugs that we will later use in the Damascus. Heat up the original bar here and we're gonna start sending our drift through the billet. Working it back and forth gently, going on in both directions so as to not tear any of the material too badly out one side or the other. Now in this step, you've gotta be careful not to deform your other holes as you go. I found the best way to do that is to drift the hole about 90% of the way and then move on to the other hole. Once you have all three at about 90%, then you go ahead and finish them out the last 10%. Now we take the files and the Dremel tools to the holes and we clean them out, make sure they're fresh and clean, no forge scale, good and flat, absolutely as clean as possible. With our holes clean, we now measure our final interior dimensions, cut our plugs to the lengths we need. Now we begin the long, arduous process of fitting each individual plug to its unique hole. We're looking for as tight a fit as possible and at the end we'll actually friction put them in by hammering them in the rest of the way before welding. With a good tight fit we jump over to the TIG welder fire it up and we're just going to put a fusion TIG bead around each plug. No filler rod in this material. This is another point where I'll make a note that we should have used a thicker parent material bar. Being only quarter inch at this point, um, once we set those welds, it really drove the TIG weld down deep into the bar and we weren't able to get it all out in the end. Um, you'll see that in the final pattern a little bit. Not really the end of the world, but it doesn't make it for a crisp Damascus pattern. So we'll take them over to the grinder, grind them down a little bit. Here's another step I think I could have changed. I would have made them even shorter. So they only protruded about 3 16 of an inch above the parent bar. Now luckily they fit over my power hammer dies so that I could set all three all at once. That was really helpful. Now with the weld set, we're just gonna true it up with the hand hammer. Make sure the pieces are good and flat in there. No raised sections. I'm trying to get as flat as possible. And once again, you don't wanna forge on the edge of the bar here. You wanna keep those those bulges in there because that's the pattern. We'll grind it flat later, but you don't want to forge that back in or you'll screw up your, your roundness of your plug. Now 
Now, as I said, this took a lot of surface grinding. Uh, we took a quarter inch bar down to uh, about uh, 0.11, so just under eighth inch, and uh, we still didn't get quite all of the TIG weld out of some of the edge of the welds. Um, but we got it roughed in on the belted surface grinder, and then we cleaned up the edges, and we're gonna pop this baby over to the Landis stone surface grinder and true it up for its final etching. All right, guys, well, that was a ton of fun. We learned a lot. Um, I want to take a second to shout out Prince Fours Works, Joshua Prince. Um, he really helped us with some of these techniques. I've spent a lot of time in the DMs with him on Instagram, uh, chit chatting, asking him questions, trying to figure out uh, exactly how to do this properly. Um, he's a very skilled bladesmith and makes a lot of plug welded mosaic masks. So go check him out. Um, this was a, just a test. We're gonna eventually make a couple of these sort of bars to sell on the Instagram, sell on our website. Um, but this was just a test. Um, as you guys saw, there was still a little bit of uh, TIG weld inclusion on a couple of these plugs. And that's just, you know, we started with some thinner base material than I wanted. Uh, we should have started with some thicker stuff to allow us to scoop out that uh, old TIG weld. So, uh, but it came, all in all, it came out really well. So we're gonna throw this in the photo booth, take some, six shots of it so check out these final edits